Hello once again friends, time for coffee. Uh, this is Pastor Pete and so it's time for coffee with Pete and uh, just really great to be together. I'm enjoying all the conversations we're having in person and if you're seeing me online, I encourage you, you know, tap the comment button or send me a, a personal message, call me, whatever. Let's, let's have some more conversation. So grab your coffee. Uh, but for today, we're going to look at the book of James, fifth chapter. And I'm going to read you some verses, five or six verses, and then just hone in on a couple of key ones. Uh, there's a lot of key ones. This is, this is a very rich passage, as all of James is. But uh, yeah, James 5, verses 13 to 18. Let me read it to you, and then I'll just, like I said, hone in on a couple places there. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he'll be forgiven. And therefore... Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. And then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. This is well known for a lot from a lot of for a lot of people and and, and uh, certainly the prayer for healing for each other and for forgiveness of sins and that's not where I want to go with this today I want to take a look at a couple of just a couple of key phrases here out of verses 16 and 17 the first one being the prayer of a righteous man or a prayer of a righteous person and uh, and I just want to break that down just quickly but then I really want to lean into this concept that Elijah was a man with a nature like ours so what's it mean to be to, to have a prayer? What does it mean for to be a righteous person? Maybe that'd be the way to say it. You know, we know those of us who claim Christ, we bear His name, but we also really claim Him as our Lord and our Savior. That because of that, because of the works of Christ, we are then declared righteous. So we might be able to say we are able to say before God, regardless of how we have lived our lives. Because of Christ, we can be declared innocent and guiltless. But there's another component of being righteous that I think James is really getting at here. It's more than simply. It's not, not except for that. It's more than that. And it has to do with the fact that Christ said, follow me. And so becoming right, more righteous as days go on. So our thinking and our feeling and our acting is being constantly conformed to the will of God that we are trying to model our lives as Christ did and as he instructed us. And so being righteous means not it's more than just simply we're saved. It's that we're living out this sanctification, this life of becoming more like our Christ. So the prayers of a righteous man. That doesn't necessarily mean that some prayers are more acceptable than other prayers because somebody has achieved a level of righteousness greater than another. But our sincerity, our desire, our motivation, our intent is that we should think, feel, and act as Christ did. Then in verse 17, we hear this verse about Elijah. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Wow. You know, if you really study it out, if you read out even a little bit, read into Kings, how the, the escapades, if you will, of Elijah. He was... Uh, he accomplished so many amazing things and really was, a, a, in, a, in a way, a model of Christ and, sh and did miracles in God's name, did miracles on behalf of God to show people God's glory. But here we have James saying, look, but, but Elijah was a mortal man like us. He had a nature like ours. He's fallible. He was mortal. He, he, he faced suffering. Um, he had disease, he had temptations, he had persecutions, he struggled mightily, and he was also just called from among. He, was, he wasn't born as the super special one. God chose him and he was willing. And now we're getting to the other part of the nature. Uh, Elijah submitted himself to God. Elijah uh, obeyed God. 
Elijah trusted God. These are the hallmarks and the elements of faith. We have this kind of faith in Christ. Elijah had that in God himself because Christ had not yet come on the earth. But we're not unlike Elijah, says James to us. We have the same temptations and sufferings. So you reverse that phrase. Not only was Elijah a man like a na nature like ours, we we're, were people with a nature like his. So therefore, it's a possibility for us. It's, it's our, our uh, capability to, to follow his footsteps. His heartfelt, Elijah's heartfelt and persistent prayers and his readiness to respond to God meant that his prayers were heard by God and they were put into action and made effective by God and all for the purpose of showing God's glory on this earth so that people would be drawn to God, drawn into the same relationships. So this concept of the heartfelt and persistent, the, the effective, if you will, prayers of man, the fervent prayers of man, the earnest and continuous prayers of man, that's, that's where we go back to and say, how is your praying? Are, do you, are you a one-off prayer? Are you simply throwing it out there saying, God, I really need this to happen. I know you can, so please do. Or like Elijah, we're taking that example and being so heartfelt and persistent. He's persistent in his prayers. He's fervent. He's, he's so earnest. And he won't stop because his trust is in God. And he won't stop until he sees the fulfillment of that promise. I bless you today, friends. And if there's something that you're struggling with, I, I, I just hope that you would seek out other brothers and sisters or maybe even the leaders of the church to pray for you, for your physical healing, your emotional healing, your spiritual restoration. The promises are there in James, and, I, and they're there available for you today. So God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Amen.